What's up agents and welcome back to another Division PTS video. Today I wanted to follow up on my last video which was the ongoing directive build. We did a lot of testing over on Twitch today to really come up with what we thought was the best all round build and one that was really good as well in Legendary. Uh, but just before we get started be sure to hit that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up and hit the bell so you are notified when I upload more Division videos. Even better, come on over to Twitch, I could be streaming live right now. And if you need a community Discord, you'll find the link down below in the description. And with all that said, let's get started. So in my previous video, I got a lot of comments saying, why don't you do this, why don't you do that, why don't you do this? And I thought, do you know what, I need to go back to the lab and we need to test the ongoing directive just a little bit more. So previously, we had uh, Gunner in here. And uh, we changed that out to survivalist. Now, this build isn't just about doing a DPS. It's about supporting your teammates. And what you'll notice is somebody could put it in my uh, my YouTube comments. I forget the name now. Uh, but if you look at this here, the survivalist tactical link, group members get 10% bonus damage to targets with status effects, which mean when they get the hollow point ammo and they're causing bleed, they're going to do 10% more damage without you even having to do anything. So this is just an absolute no-brainer to put this on. Bow's pretty good against dogs as well if you're doing legendary title basin. Uh, they're pretty good as well. But just obviously make sure you've got LMG specced out because LMG is probably the best gun to go with with this because you've got to make sure you've got enough bullets with hollow point to actually still be killing. So I do recommend using an LMG with this. So... We did a couple of different things over on Twitch. We tried specking it into status damage as well. So basically you'll see here in my in my stash, uh, I've got basically a status version of all the ongoing directives. And the status did about 54k per tick. Now I could have got more. Uh, we could have put the Arcanist on here, uh, the backpack, and probably got about another 20%, which probably would have taken us up to about 60k, maybe just above. But that really wasn't doing enough damage. So even when they were bleeding and hiding in cover, the 60k a tick, it's, it's just worth nothing. It's just a waste of damage. So we switched away from that and we went back to using all reds. Uh, we decided to go with Wicked for the backpack talent. Uh, applying a status effect increases total weapon damage by 18% because every time we shoot, we're applying the bleed with the hollow point. You can still go with Vigilance. Vigilance is absolutely fine. Uh, but it just depends how you feel. Because in Legendary, and this is what we really wanted this to work in, you get hit a lot. So you're going to be dropping Vigilance a lot. Wicked is just there more often. I'll go through the other stats in a minute. We did choose to go with the on-directive chest piece because we get 15% multiplicative damage from this. We get up to 35%. Now, we could do a bit of a trade-off here. You could really go Glass Cannon if you wanted to. Uh, so you could basically just whack on uh, the Sacrifice and get a straight 30%. But then you would have to drop the Contractor's Gloves, which is going to drop the LMG and the damage to armor. And so although it works out about 7%-ish more damage with Glass Cannon, but you're also taking 60% incoming. And I just didn't think, especially for Legendary, it was worth the trade-off. I think just keeping the chest piece on uh, was was really, really good idea and not losing the damage to armor and not losing the LMG damage here. I think it just wasn't worth the trade-off. Skill-wise, uh, you can go with the Reviver Hive. Uh, and this was the, the bit that came in clutch during our testing today. Glorious, uh, one of the regulars on my stream, came up with this. He said use the Jammer Pulse. And obviously the Jammer Pulse counts as a status effect. The regular pulse doesn't, uh, but the Jammer one does. And then, as you can see, I'll use this gun here. But, uh, uh, there you go. As you can see, I just caught it with the status effect on. It gave me the 231 hollow point ammo to rip through the ads with. And as you can see, the numbers there, it was like 600k near enough. Six, 700k was what I was getting on all the enemies in Legendary as well. So, look on here. So, you can see, it's 587. But we was using the busy little bee as well. And I was generally proccing one or two enemies. Flicking over. And they got 857 there uh, for getting the, the, the proc. A really quick 
hit for an extra 100k per you know per bullet so really really worth it so let's go through the actual build so we're going to keep the fire grenades on just to help because it, no, I'm not going to lie, and everyone who saw it in Twitch chat today, getting hollow points sometimes if the enemies don't rush you can be really, really tricky. So the fire grenades are a really, really good shout. Uh, obviously, as well, you can use the bow if you really, really want to. Uh, we've gone with the carnage. I've gone uh, with a backup of the GR9 because of the huge mag. But with the carnage, you can see, obviously, I would definitely want to be maxing this out. Uh, but we get perfect say this. Deal 25% weapon damage to bleeding enemies. A hollow point just makes them bleed. And if we are struggling to get a kill to proc for hollow point, after three kills, it applies bleed to the next enemy you hit. And hopefully you'll kill it and you can proc again that way as well. Uh, the GR9, I just went with fast hands just to reload quicker. But you could probably just put on regular sadist on there and it'd be really, really good as well. We use the, the busy little bead. The change to it is really, really nice. Uh, obviously the, this one's you know dead it's not really one you want to be using but it was really just to get the talent off it each shot to a different target will give you one stack up to 10 each stack will give you 20% weapon damage stacks will activate once the agent switches weapon and last for 10 seconds so really just like just as you start combat just that one shot just gives you 10% damage 20% uh, damage for 10 seconds and that is a lot of damage and actually, in Legendary, it worked really well because there was a lot of enemies. You could just kind of ping and stack it up. And then when something's rushing you, you know, just, just kind of go ham. But just be careful out there if you're reloading. You've got to be, you know, careful to maximize your time with that extended damage. So I do hope they keep the busy little bee uh, as it is. Then we'll go, we'll look at the backpack. So I've gone with the Seska backpack because we do want to be as close to 60% crit chance as well. Remember, this is, even though this is a support build of, of sorts, we, we want to be able to do as much DPS as possible. Because if you're not killing, you're not really much use in a legendary. And if you're not buffing, the whole build's absolutely pointless. So we're going with the Seska crit chance, weapon damage, crit damage, crit chance, crit chance, with Wicked as we talked about earlier. Contractor's gloves, which again we talked about earlier on, but. Weapon damage, obviously. Damage to armor, obviously. And then crit hit chance. And then let's take a look at the ongoing directive. So on the mask, you can see we get 15% status effects. 30% reload speed, which is really nice with an LMG. But then shooting a status affected enemy will apply a mark. Killing a marked enemy grants you a full clip of hollow point ammo, which is huge on an LMG. Or your active weapon. And half of the clip... Of the agent's active weapon to the rest of the party. So just remember, uh, that's the agent's gun. So if they use an M1A, they're going to get six bullets and, and so on. They're not going to get half of your bullets. They're going to get half of their own magazine. The mark lasts for 10 seconds. Hollow point ammo amplifies weapon damage by 20% and applies bleed. Absolutely beautiful. Weapon damage, crit chance, and the crit damage. Ulster, weapon damage, crit damage. Knees. Weapon damage, crit chance, and then we went with the chest piece. We talked about this earlier on, but the talent, uh, it increases the damage by 15% more. But we get a total of 35%, which is 15% amp damage on this build with no real trade-off. It's just really, really, really nice. Sadly, the, part, the bonus doesn't apply to your party members. They just get 20%, but 35 for us to help kill in. It's just, you know, it's just easy. It's just so easy to do. And then, like I said, if you if you're using the busy little B, you can see the icon bob up above the heads. You know, we get some shots in here. Let's get that tag that one. You know, I got half of them there. You know, and you're getting huge numbers. I got over a million on what is almost a support build. 800k. You know, you're definitely always getting at least one tag. And if you wanted to get at least one tag, there you go. 837k with bleed damage at nearly 40k. You know, it's just not worth running status effects everywhere. States effects giving us 54k a tick on the bleed. You know, we're getting 40k without sacrificing all that crit damage, essentially. Just not worth doing. So if you want to have a look at the stat page, you can see here we're at 60% crit chance, 103% crit damage, and 85% headshot. To get to that, we've got crit damage there on the gun. We've got crit damage there on the gun. And crit chance on the muzzle at the front. I think we get to 61 in total. Uh, and then 35 rounds in the large pouch. The 50, we would get 50 if we ran gunner, but I think giving teammates the extra 10%, it's just definitely worth it. It's just 
you know, it's a no-brainer. Revive Hive, a no-brainer. But do remember, this, this is the Jammer Pulse, which really does help out in Legendary. And is really cool for getting your bullets, because as long as you can get it wide, they're jammed like this. You have no problem whatsoever getting your bullets. If you're unsure you're going to get the bullets, you know, you're having a bit of a rough time, switch to the GR9. You know, proc it in there and get 223. You know, look at that thing. Absolutely blows past the enemies. Just don't forget to get into the habit of shooting with your busy little bee as well. For that extra 10, 20% damage. One shot will do, 20% is huge over 10 seconds. Makes for a really, really nice little damage buff. Uh, and that's going to be it. Uh, you can watch the previous video if you want to see any uh, action of this in, uh, you know, anything of this action of this. <laughs> you want to see this in action. Very few things have changed. I do do more damage now. Uh, so, but I don't think it's worth me extending the video any longer than what it actually is. But I'm now going to prep up uh, this build on the live server, ready for, hopefully if this goes live, I need to get the holster, I had to use the, the caches to get the holster, I haven't got a holster to fit it. But it's really easy to put together as well. Really, you know, pretty much everyone's probably got all of these pieces already. So the minute this is going to go live, I'm going to have this to play with. It's just really, really nice being able to do that much damage with an LMG and then provide all that damage buff to your teammates at the same time. Thank you for watching, everybody. Don't forget to hit subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and hit that bell for notifications. Come on over to Twitch and say hi or join the Discord. I would really, really appreciate that. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next one. Enjoy the rest of the PTS, guys. Good night.